Hello everyone. I am Dr. Deepika Malik. Today's topic of discussion is industrial production of acetic acid or vinegar. Acetic acid production is as old as wine making. In 3rd century, Greek philosopher described how vinegar acted on metals to produce pigments useful in art. In 8th century, Persian chemist Jabir ibn Hayyan concentrated acetic acid from vinegar through distillation process. In 1847, German scientist Hermann Kolbe synthesized acetic acid from inorganic materials for first time. By 1910, most of the acetic acid was obtained from the distillation of wood. At this time, Germany was producing 10,000 tons of acetic acid. about 30% of which was used in the manufacturing of indigo dyes acetic acid is produced both synthetically by carbonylation of methanol and by bacterial fermentation the fermentation process remains important for the production of vinegar as many food purity laws stipulate that vinegar used in foods must be of biological origin now let us see its definition and types acetic acid also known as glacial acetic acid ethanoic acid or methane carboxylic acid is the most important of the carboxylic acids it is principal constituent of vinegar a dilute approximately 5% by volume solution of acetic acid produced by fermentation and oxidation of natural carbohydrates is called vinegar a salt or an ester of acetic acid is called acetate the first vinegar was spoiled wine malt vinegar is preferred in great britain Malt vinegar is basically grain based vinegar which is made from malting barley and wine vinegar in continental europe which is made from wine other varieties of vinegar are produced from beetroot and alcoholic spirits and it is sometimes flavored for example with tarragon dill or other herbs now let us see some properties of acetic acid it is a colorless liquid with a sharp irritating smell In aqueous solution it functions as a weak acid. Pure acetic acid is called glacial acetic acid because it freezes at slightly below ordinary room temperature. Its melting point is 17 degrees Celsius, boiling point is 118 degrees Celsius. Its density is 1.05 g per ml. It has a characteristic sour taste. Glacial acetic acid is highly corrosive to metals. It is soluble in alcohol. It is highly miscible with water, glycerol, ether, acetone and benzene. These are organic solvents. It is insoluble in carbon disulfide. Now let us see uses of acetic acid. Industrially, acetic acid is used in the preparation of metal acetates which are used in some printing processes, vinyl acetate employed in the production of plastics, cellulose acetate used in making photographic films and textiles, volatile organic esters such as ethyl and butyl acetates widely used as solvents for resins, paints and lacquers. Biologically, acetic acid is an important metabolic intermediate and it occurs naturally in body fluids and in plant juices. Acetic acid is largely used in the food industry as vinegar and as an acidity regulator. Now let us see the steps involved in the production of acetic acid. Acetic acid is produced in following four steps. In first step, hydrolysis of starch to sugar takes place by using amylase enzymes. In second step, anaerobic fermentation causes conversion of sugars to alcohol and carbon dioxide by yeast enzyme zymase. In third step, conversion of ethanol to acetaldehyde and water takes place by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase by the oxidation reaction. And the last step is conversion of acetaldehyde into acetic acid by using the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase. This is again an oxidation reaction and the last two steps are done using acetic acid bacteria. Now let's have a look on different types of microorganisms involved in the production of acetic acid. Although there are a number of large bacteria as well as other microorganisms which have the ability to produce acetic acid in small amounts from various substrates, only relatively few bacteria possess the characteristics desired for vinegar production. The three important genera are genus Acetobacterium 
which includes Acetobacterium aceti, Acetobacterium xylenum, Acetobacterium pasturinium, Acetobacterium ascendens, and Acetobacterium acidigenesum. Second genera includes genus Clostridium, like Clostridium thermoacetacum, which is an anaerobic thermophile. Third genus is the genus Acetobacter, which are also known as acetic acid bacteria. These include Gluconobacter, Acetobacter Schusenbach, Acetobacter Curvum, and Acetobacter oleanens. The genus Clostridium or Acetobacterium can convert sugars to acetic acid directly without using ethanol as an intermediate. However, these bacteria are less acid tolerant. As a result, although these bacteria have been known since 1940, their industrial use remains confined to a few niche applications. Now let us see the properties of acetic acid bacteria. Acetic acid bacteria are commonly used for the production of acetic acid. The acetic acid bacteria belong to the family Pseudomonodesi. The cells are rod-shaped but elongated, filamentous, club-shaped, swollen or branched forms may occur. They are motile or non-motile and do not form endospores. The bacteria may secure energy by the oxidation of ethanol to acetic acid, by the oxidation of various sugars and other alcohols, or by anaerobic dissimilations. Given sufficient oxygen, these bacteria can produce vinegar from a variety of alcoholic foodstuffs like grain, malt, rice, or potato mashes, etc. Strains of acetic acid bacteria are selected on the basis of their ability to tolerate high concentration of acetic acid with small amount of nutrient requirements and giving high yield of acetic acid. The next slide shows the different steps involved in the making of acetic acid. These include preparation of raw materials, then fermentation by yeast, sedimentation, addition of acetic acid bacteria, acidification, oxygen, storage, aging, clarification, pasteurization, and bottling. Now we'll discuss all these steps one by one in detail. Now first are the raw materials. Falling substrates are commonly used for the preparation of acetic acid. These includes fruits such as apples, grapes, pears, peaches, plums, figs, oranges and berries. Then ethanol, wine, whey, sugar containing syrup like molasses, honey, hydrolyzed starchy materials like fermented grains, malt and rice, beer, cider, sweet or fermented juice of apples which contains 2-8% to alcohol. Cider brandy or apple jack is derived by distillation from fermented cider. It contains 40-50% to 50 of alcohol. Lavender, which is the common name for fragrant herbs and sherbs, belong to the genus Lavendula and family Lamiaceae. After the selection of raw material, second step is fermentation by yeast. Before the acetic acid fermentation can take place, the sugar in the fruit juice or other sugar containing medium must be converted to alcohol by yeast fermentation. The yeast naturally present in the fruit juice may bring about a successful spontaneous fermentation but the manufacturers cannot rely on chance and should use a starter in order to ensure a suitable fermentation. Although compressed yeast that is fresh yeast compressed into very small blocks as you can see in the image may be often used satisfactorily as a starter. The use of selected wine yeast, for example Saccharomyces ellipsoides, generally improves the flavor of the final product. Fermentations may be carried out favorably at 24 to 26 degrees Celsius. After fermentation, the next step is sedimentation. When the fermentation is complete, yeast, pulp and other sediments should be removed from the medium by process of settling. A storage period of 2 to 3 weeks is usually allowed for the sedimentation process. After sedimentation is complete, the clear medium is drawn off from the settling tank and acetic acid bacteria is added to the medium. Additional alcohol is added if necessary to increase its optimum concentration in the medium and to speed up the reaction. Alcohol in a concentration of 10 to 13 percent is readily fermented to acetaldehyde which is further converted to acetic acid. 
The acetic acid bacteria grows on the surface of the liquid and forms a gelatinous zooglial mat known as mother of vinegar. When alcohol concentration is 14% or greater, the zooglial mat forms with difficulty and the alcohol is incompletely oxidized to acetic acid. So to sum up here, the alcohol concentration should not proceed beyond 13% as 14% will not allow the formation of mat of the acetic acid bacteria on the surface and this mat like growth is also called mother of vinegar. After addition of the acetic acid bacteria, the next step is acidification. The medium is further acidified by the addition of some pure vinegar. The initial acidification is carried out to inhibit the development of undesirable types of bacteria. Addition of vinegar reduces the pH of the medium which is desirable for the growth of the acetic acid bacteria. So basically, here we are adding small amount of pure vinegar to provide suitable acidic conditions for the growth of acetic acid bacteria and to inhibit growth of undesirable microorganisms. Now the important thing to note here is that a medium should never be acidified before the alcoholic fermentation by yeast is complete because the sugar in the medium would be incompletely converted to alcohol. Vinegars made from incompletely fermented juice are usually low in acetic acid and of poor quality. So we have to make sure that we are adding the pure vinegar for acidification only after the yeast fermentation is complete. The fermentation by yeast of sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide was an anaerobic process. Now after the addition of acetic acid bacteria we have to make sure that oxygen is supplied to these bacteria for further conversion. Since the conversion of ethanol to acetic acid is primarily an oxidation process, the success of the fermentation will depend on the availability of large quantities of oxygen. Commercial production of acetic acid by fermentation is usually carried out in large casks of proper design or generators constructed in the form of trunicated cone provided at top and bottom with perforated scaffolds and near the bottom with air inlets. These are basically talking about the fermenters only at industrial level. Industrial vinegar making methods accelerate the process by improving the supply of oxygen to the bacteria. Now after the alcohol has been converted to acetic acid by the acetic acid bacteria, next step is their storage. Previous to storage, the vinegar fermentation should be allowed to proceed until the vinegar has reached its maximum strength. After this stage in the fermentation, when all the alcohol has been converted to acetic acid, the acetic acid bacteria or their enzymes will gradually destroy the vinegar by oxidation, unless they are inhibited through exclusion of oxygen or other means. Barrels or tanks in which vinegar is to be stored should be completely filled and then sealed to prevent excess of air to the vinegar. So while storing we have to make sure that there is no oxygen in the cask and if by chance oxygen is left within your cask it will continue to destroy the vinegar as the acetic acid bacteria will keep on oxidizing the vinegar and ultimately will not get our product. After storing the next step is aging. Aging takes place during storage and may require a year or longer. Alcohol vinegars which are essentially dilute acetic acid solutions are not improved by aging. Alcohol vinegars are produced from the alcohol directly and not from any fruit juice. After aging, next step is the clarification. Some vinegar may be bottled without further treatment, but most of them should be clarified first. Clarification may be effected by filtration using filter aids like diatomaceous earth as shown in the image. After clarification, next step is pasteurization. Pasteurization is carried out by heating the acetic acid solution to a temperature of 60 to 66 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes of pasteurizing, the vinegar is allowed to cool. Pasteurization is done to kill the remaining acetic acid bacteria. If left unchecked, the acetic acid bacteria produce more and more layers until eventually the whole vinegar vessel is a solid mass of mother. As I've told earlier also, the mat-like growth of acetic acid bacteria on the surface is called as mother of vinegar. Now after pasteurization is complete, next step is bottling. The vinegar should be properly aged, cleared and pasteurized before it is bottled. Bottles should be completely filled and tightly capped or cogged with treated corks to prevent excess of air. 
let it rest for about a month or you can bottle it and use it right away. Now till here we have discussed all the steps involved in the preparation of acetic acid. Next slide shows the different methods for industrial production of ethanol depending upon the kind of material which we are using. Three types of methods are involved in the preparation of acetic acid. First is Olean's method which is carried out in wooden cask or barrel. Second is surface fermentation or trickling generation method which are carried out in surface fermenters or barrels. Third is submerged fermentation methods which are carried out in stirred tank fermenters. Now we will discuss all these methods one by one in detail. For Orleans method, fermentation is done inside a large wooden container, cask or barrel as you can see in the diagram. A raft or light wooden grating may be used as a support for the bacterial film in the cask or barrel as you can see in the second image. Containers are laid down on their sides and holes are drilled at the top and end sides of barrel to allow oxygen to flow inside. These holes also contain screen filters which prevent insects and bugs from entering the cask which will disturb the production. Oxygen is necessary for the production of vinegar as the bacteria that turns the solution into vinegar requires oxygen. This we have seen already. The cask is filled to two-thirds of its capacity with the alcohol liquid already fermented by the yeast and about 20% of fresh vinegar using long-necked funnels from top to begin the fermentation process without disturbing the surface microbial film. This addition of vinegar is done to lower down the pH that we have already discussed earlier. Ethanol is converted into acetic acid within 5 weeks. The temperature is kept at 21 to 29 degrees Celsius. Samples are taken periodically from the tap. About 15% liquid is left to blend with next batch. The advantage of Olean's method is that it is a continuous process and it produces a high quality vinegar. Disadvantages include that it is an older, slower and traditional method. The mother of vinegar, that is the layer of acetic acid bacteria on the surface of the substrate, gradually fills the cask and stops the process. The efficiency includes 75% of acetic acid production only. Second method is surface fermentation or trickling generation method. It is the most commonly used industrial method for production of acetic acid. Surface fermenter or barrel is filled with vinegar moistened beech wood shavings. The pH is in the range of 2.5 to 3.2. A diagram of a trickling generator is shown on the given slide. The bacteria is added to the fermenter now. A tray is present at bottom of the chamber. The substrate alcohol is poured from the top of the container using a sprayer which slowly percolates down through the shavings fillings. Ethanol in substrate is converted to vinegar by the bacteria in the wood chips. Oxygen is allowed to container through an inlet at the bottom. Temperature at the top is 25 degrees Celsius and at the bottom is 35 degrees Celsius. The warm oxygen from the bottom moves upward and after getting cooled comes back to the bottom. This leads to better circulation of air within the chamber. The product, that is acetic acid, falls in the tray at the base of the fermenter or barrel within a span of 3 days. About 80-80% to 80 vinegar is produced. The advantages of trickling generation method is that it is of low cost, there is an ease of control of the process, high production of acetic acid is achieved and less space requirements are there of the trickling generators. This advantage includes the wastage of substrate. The next slide shows the different supporting mediums used for trickling generators. In addition to beech wood shavings or chops, the supporting medium can also be constructed using coke coal, rattan, wood charcoal, pressed pomace, corn cobs, excelsior or other materials that offer large surface areas. The respective images are shown on the right side. Coke is more durable than wood charcoal while corn cobs are not particularly durable. It is essential that the material used for supporting purposes should not impart any undesirable odors or flavors to the vinegar. The materials should be thoroughly treated with water and then with vinegar before it is used in the generators. The last method includes the submerged method. This method is newer, faster and more efficient. Production plant is fitted with large stainless steel containers fitted with internal cooling coils called acetators. These are kind of fermenters only. 
Essentially, it is shaped like a typical aerated stirred tank fermenter. Agitators are equipped with centrifugal pumps called agitators at bottom that will pump air bubbles vigorously into the tank. As pump stirs alcohol, the nutrients enhance the growth of acetobacter or oxygen bubbles. Heat jackets keeps the temperature between 40 to 42 degrees Celsius. It is operated batch wise. In 72 hours, ethanol is converted to acetic acid. About 94% vinegar is produced. The vinegar is piped from acetator to the filtering machine. All submerged vinegar is turbid because of the high bacterial content and have to be filtered. This method mainly includes advantages. These are high productivity, conversion rate is higher, faster oxidation of ethanol, low cost due to automation that is easy to control temperature, pH, oxygen is possible using this method. Now let us have a look of the possible causes of spoilage in the vinegar factory. Three main types of organisms responsible for the spoilage are vinegar eels that is nematode worms also called anguilula acetai may be a source of considerable trouble in vinegar factories especially when the fruit from which the cider or wine is made has not been carefully controlled. They also gain excess from dirt bought into the plant and from insects. They may attack the bacterial film, cause it to sing and cause deterioration of the vinegar. Second is mites. Mites breed rapidly in the presence of warmth and moisture. Cleanliness of a high order may be necessary to prevent mites from appearing in an establishment. By placing a ring of turpentine or some other repellent substances around each air hole in a cask or barrel, their excess may be prevented. Third type is vinegar flies, which are a species of drosophila. They breed in decayed fruit, fruit juices and vinegar. By preventing these substances from being spilled about and by keeping the factory scrupulously clean, their presence can usually be avoided. So now let us have a quick review on the process of making of acetic acid. First includes the selection of raw materials. Second is fermentation by yeast which carries out anaerobic conversion of sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Third includes the sedimentation for the removal of yeast and pulp. Then is the addition of acetic acid bacteria for conversion of ethanol to acetic acid. After that, acidification is done by adding small amount of pure vinegar to provide suitable acidic conditions for the growth of acetic acid bacteria and to inhibit growth of undesirable microorganisms. After that, oxygen is provided for the acetic acid bacteria to carry out oxygenation reaction for conversion of ethanol to acetic acid. Then storage is done in airtight containers. Aging takes place during storage only. Then clarification is done using filters and filterates. Pasteurization is done to kill remaining acetic acid bacteria. And finally, vinegar is packaged into bottles. So with this, we wind up the topic for industrial production of acetic acid. For any doubts and queries, you can contact me through the given email ID. Thank you.